Hi guys, welcome back. By the intro, you got it right. It's the Suzuki Bergman Street. To be precise, the Bergman 125. Now, it's been more than a year since the Bergman has been launched and the version that's shown here, it's not BS6, but instead it's the BS4 version. And being BS4, well the 124cc engine used in the Bergman is a carburetor engine. Now carburetor engines are still nice and actually they have their own advantages than a fuel injection engine and here with the Bergman, the engine does perform pretty well. And in fact, this scooter is one of the top performing 125cc scooters I've tested till date. And by that, what I mean is that the Bergman is a quick to accelerate scooter and also a pretty good one to hit the 80km per hour mark. There is this sheer aggression with the Bergman and even though this being a scooter, it gives you a feel like you're not riding a normal scooter. And a lot of that has to do with the design of the Bergman. We'll take a close look at the design later on, but just one thing here is that the footrest in the Bergman has two positions where you can get a normal footrest position or there is this much better slant position. I prefer that and actually that gives you more flexibility while controlling the Bergman. And this riding posture is pretty good and that combined with a very responsive handle makes the Bergman an easy to flick around scooter. And this design and seating posture actually helps to easily maneuver through traffic. Suzuki did the ride control side of the Bergman pretty well and they paid more attention to the ride quality and comfort with the Bergman. The engine is not only powerful but at the same time it's refined and smooth too. And in fact one thing I've noticed in the Bergman is that there wasn't much vibrations from any part for a speed range of 20 to 80 km per hour. Now from 0 to 20 there was slight power building up feel from the footrest in the slant position but about that speed it was gone and the ride starts to feel much more refined. And actually that encourages to gain more speed. And like I said before, the Bergman can hit the 80 plus mark without giving much stress to the engine and that's a perfect thing for this aggressive looking scooter. And here since you can gain good speed, a good braking system was much needed and actually even though not the best, the brakes used is good. The front is disc and the rear is drum and you also get combined braking system. Sudden brakes are responsive and controlled and the scooter does stop well. Well it's actually a bit of surprise because the tires are not thick tires and also the brakes are the usual combo seen in the 125cc scooters but for some reason the braking here with the Bergman was better than other scooters in this segment. And in fact the comfort side is also great with the Bergman. This is the scooter that I felt I could take for a long ride. The seat is really good with great comfort and that combined with the flexibility to relax foot in different positions made the ride enjoyable. I wasn't feeling any tiredness even after riding for approximately 60 km in a stretch and actually the Bergman gave a mileage of 51 km per liter in that ride. Now for the seat height, it's 780 mm and for me it was comfortable with both my foot reaching the ground easily and also the handlebar didn't give me any issues. But one thing to note is that the handlebar was very close to my leg and I feel for tall riders you might face some difficulties. And for your reference, my height is 176 cm. Then coming to the suspensions used, they are good ones even though they are a bit on the stiffer side and I did ride through rough patches and the Bergman didn't give me any stress or strain. And even the 160mm clearance was sufficient enough to keep the underside safe through these conditions. And also one more excellent thing with the Bergman is the storage space available. There is a 21.5 litre underseat storage which will take in a large size fully covered element and then there is a glove box and a rack available for extra storage. And also you get two hooks of good quality for hanging stuff. So all of this together makes the Bergman a scooter that I can recommend for touring. You can easily go for 300km ride in a single full tank and by the way the full tank capacity of the Bergman is 5.6 litres. Now we didn't touch the design of the Bergman yet because just check it. This is not a conventional looking scooter. It looks very unique and it does borrow this uniqueness from its elder siblings. The front LED headlight and the position light is attractive and also very functional. The range and coverage of this headlight is excellent for a scooter. And in the front, you also get a high raised windscreen and overall from the front itself, the Bergman does stand out. And that's actually seen with the handlebar and also the fully digital meter. It's a very clean panel with white backlight and also excellent readability. It does show the needed stuff and I like this digital panel a lot. Now the handlebar does have a very different style and also its turning radius is more than normal scooters. For the switch controls in the handlebar, it's just the regular ones and here the main control that you miss out is a pass light control and if I want to nitpick, well, you don't get an engine kill switch too. Then for the tail light, it's a sleek looking LED tail light and for the pillion grab rail, it does blend well with the design of the scooter and it's a moderately comfortable one for the pillion to hold. And finally to complete the unique design, you get a very sporty muffler and there are slight chrome finishes here and there and there is plenty of sharp body curves throughout the scooter and you also get a good quality aluminium pillion footrest. And now talking about the overall build quality of the scooter, the plastics use does feel strong and sturdy. 
Now, one thing I didn't like here is that the fuel filling system is the underseat one, and to open the seat, you actually have to do that from the ignition control by twisting it to the left. Now, the overall design of the Bergman is a bit on the bulky side, even though it's a very light scooter. But for me, I really like this design. It's mainly because the design is well thought out for giving good ride quality and comfort. Now, I know this design might not appeal to everyone, and actually that's the main highlight of the Bergman. It's a scooter which is unique and also one that I feel is the best all-rounder scooter. You want to go for a short city commute or a long ride, both are very much possible with this scooter. Now other than some minute omissions like no pass light switch control, no external fuel cap etc, everything is done well. But the reason I did emphasize on these minor things is because the Bergman is not a cheap scooter. It's a bit on the pricey side where the present X showroom pricing is approximately 77,592 Indian rupees. But given the fact that it can be used as an all-purpose scooter, which does all the necessary stuff pretty well, and also given the fact that it is the only scooter that looks and functions differently than all conventional scooters available now, well for that, you might have to ignore the price. And one fact is that, this BS4 version of the Bergman, which is actually a pricey scooter, is actually cheaper than the new BS6 Activo 125. And also if you're a person who's looking forward in buying the Bergman, I feel it's still a good time to do it. Because when Suzuki updates it to BS6, the price will be an interesting thing. And before you go, if you are from Kollam, Kerala and you want to do a test ride or make a booking for the Bergman or any Suzuki scooters or bikes, well, you can contact the number shown here. And I think presently they have all the color options available for the Bergman, but my favorite color is the metallic matte black. Well, that's up for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. If so, please do hit the like button and also please do subscribe. See you soon. Till then, bye.